Welcome to Wednesday, May the 13th. I'm Pastor Jim Krieger, inviting you to join us in a traditional worship service in this continued season of Easter. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. As we send out the lyrics for our opening hymn in our congregational email this week, please turn to those lyrics now as we lift our voices together in singing Alleluia, Alleluia, Hearts to Heaven. Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. I said I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord and you forgave the iniquity of my sin. We come before our Heavenly Father now in a time of confession of our sins. O Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities with which I have ever offended you and justly deserve your temporal and eternal punishment but I am heartily sorry for them and sincerely repent of them. And I pray you of your boundless mercy and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor, sinful being. Upon this, your confession, I, by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God unto all of you. And in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O God, you make the minds of your faithful to be of one will. Grant that we may love what you have commanded and desire what you promise, that among the many changes of this world, our hearts may be fixed where true joys are found, 
through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please join me in confessing our common Christian faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The message for today is centered around the theme, Defending and Proclaiming the Resurrection. Let me begin this way. During these past several weeks, our families, our nation, and the world has been literally returned upside down by the coronavirus. And we all see the effects all around us. The hardships of privately owned businesses, the despair of families whose only source of income disappeared, the anguish over the suffering and death of friends and family, the daily frustration many people feel being confined to their homes, and especially when they can't visit their parents or grandparents who live in a care facility, and parents daily trying to provide comfort and reassurance and peace of mind to their own children who don't really understand what is happening. But there is hope. There is hope even in the midst of these events we do not fully understand and bring increasing challenges to our everyday. Many parents and their children have spent more time together as a family in these last several weeks than many of them have spent together in the past year. Many schools, like ours at Holy Cross, have provided continuing online education for our students so that they are prepared when they return to school in the fall. Many people have responded out of care and kindness to the increasing number of opportunities to provide assistance to their neighbors and friends who cannot risk leaving home. And many, many more phone calls have been made to family members and friends that might not have been made without the challenges of this time. For many weeks now, our primary focus and attention each day has been almost surrounded and singularly focused on the coronavirus. But one thing has not changed. The one thing that remains and deserves to be the focus and attention of each of our days, the daily love of God our Father, who always provides us with everything we need for the care and well-being of our mind, our body, and our soul. So in the midst of all the changes, in the midst of all the challenges, as Christians, we have even more opportunities now than ever before to celebrate this powerful truth of Easter. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. We cannot let this global pandemic or any event alter the way we live our daily lives in Christ. Proclaiming, celebrating, above all, living the good news of God's love for all sinners that through faith in his one and only Son brings forgiveness and salvation. To guide my message to you today, I share with you these words from St. Peter, spoken on that first day of Pentecost, Acts chapter 2, beginning at verse 29. Brothers, I can tell you confidently that the patriarch David died and was buried, and his tomb is still here to this day. 
But he was a prophet and knew that God had promised him on oath that he would place one of his descendants on his throne. Seeing what was ahead, he spoke of the resurrection of Christ and that he was not abandoned to the grave, nor did his body see decay. God has raised this Jesus to life, and we are all witnesses of this fact. We all remember how the disciple Thomas struggled with that news that Jesus had risen, because Thomas was not with the other disciples when Jesus showed himself to them on the day of his resurrection. But one week later, Jesus appeared to Thomas and confronted him right in front of the other disciples. Jesus invited Thomas to reach out and touch the places in his hands where the nails had pierced him. He invited Thomas to reach his hand out and put it into the wound in his side made by the spear. Thomas refused. For Thomas, seeing was believing. But then Jesus uttered those challenging and timeless words that bring to life and light the simplest definition of living faith. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Maybe this has never happened to you, but how would you respond to a friend or family member who came up to you and said, you know, I've thought about it a lot and I've struggled over it. I just can't bring myself to believe that Jesus rose from the dead. You know, that kind of thing just doesn't happen. These questions get asked a lot more than you probably know, even by some who call themselves Christians. How would you respond to such a clear statement of disbelief in a risen Lord Jesus Christ? Well, first, before you find yourself thinking or telling anyone that belief in the resurrection isn't absolutely necessary for eternal life in heaven, listen to these two passages from the Word of God. From Romans 10, beginning at verse 9, if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. And from 1 Corinthians 15, beginning at verse 17, if Christ has not been raised, then your faith is futile and you are still dead in your sins. Then those also who have fallen asleep in Christ have perished. From the word of God, it is absolutely necessary for eternal life in heaven that one believes and confesses these words. So, back to the original question. What would you say to anyone who seems to doubt and challenges and doesn't believe in the resurrection of Jesus? What would it really take to convince them that Jesus rose from the dead? Well, the first answer is the most important. It takes an act of God, because only God's Holy Spirit can create that faith that believes and trusts in what we as sinners cannot possibly comprehend. Only the Holy Spirit provides that faith that believes that through the Bible, we also are firsthand eyewitnesses of the resurrection of Jesus. We can say without doubt the tomb of Jesus was empty on that first Easter morning. This is a statement of undeniable fact. When the women got there on that third day, the tomb was empty. When Peter and John ran to get there, the tomb was empty. When the Romans investigated, the tomb was empty. When the Jewish leaders checked it out, the tomb was empty. This one fact has never been successfully been answered by any critic of the Christian faith. If Jesus did not rise from the dead, what happened to his body? Neither the Romans 
nor the Jewish leaders would have ever conspired to take it. The Romans really didn't care about Jesus one way or the other. They were simply posted as guards. And the Jewish leaders, above all, needed to make sure his body remained in the grave. The disciples had no reason to take his body, for they believed that he had died on the cross. And since the Roman soldiers guarded the tomb under penalty of death, if anyone disturbed it, they would have made sure no one could have come to take the body of Jesus. So then we are left with the simple question, what happened to the body of Jesus? He was laid in the tomb on Friday, but he wasn't there three days later. So this one truth remains, the message of the angel. He is not here, he is risen. Therefore we say, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed, alleluia. There is the work that only the Holy Spirit can do, the voice and words we have just proclaimed. But we can also proclaim the evidence of the resurrection of Jesus supported by the Bible, that is an eyewitness written by God. The resurrected Jesus appeared to Mary Magdalene. The resurrected Jesus appeared to the two disciples on the road to Emmaus. The resurrected Jesus appeared to Peter, to James, to John, to all of the disciples, and to more than 500 people. Those appearances happened at different times, different places, in different circumstances. Jesus invited the disciple Peter to reach out and touch his wounds. Jesus ate fish with the disciples on the shore of Galilee after his resurrection. And when St. Paul listed the appearances of Jesus in 1 Corinthians 15, beginning at verse 5, it sounded like a legal brief as if to say, If you doubt my words, these witnesses are all available. Ask them. Check it out for yourself. From the day of his resurrection, many skeptics have continued to attack and seek to undermine the fact that the tomb was empty on the third day. There is another undeniable truth taught in Philippians 2, beginning at verse 9. God has highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee shall bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess, Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. The skeptics, the enemies of Jesus, continue their attacks, and they seek still today to undermine the church founded on Jesus. And they continue to reject what the Bible teaches at its heart and core, that Jesus is the one, only true Son of God, sent from heaven to suffer death on the cross for our sins, but rise again in victory on the third day. So in these challenging times of a global pandemic, as Christians, we must continue to keep the faith and proclaim in the death and resurrection of Jesus as God's one and only Son for these two reasons. First, the death and resurrection of Jesus is the chief cornerstone of our faith. The resurrection is God's stamp of approval for the life and death of his son. That's why St. Peter writes in Acts 2.24, God raised him from the dead. The resurrection of Jesus didn't just happen by chance. God raised his own son to provide what we cannot, the forgiveness of sins and victory over death and the grave. And second, Jesus defeated death for all time when he rose from the dead. The Bible says death came into the world because of sin, and without sin, there would be no death. That's why Revelation 21 verse 4 says that in heaven there will be no more death or mourning or crying or pain, for the old order of things has passed away. Death, suffering, and pain belong to the old order that even now, today, is slowly passing away. There will be no graves dug in the hillsides of heaven 
Because Christ is risen, he is risen indeed. Alleluia. Children of God, if you only remember one thing from this message today, then let it be these truths from God's word that you can proclaim each and every day of your life with absolute confidence and trust. From 1 Corinthians 15, beginning at verse 55. O death, where is your victory? O death, where is your sting? The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. And finally, let Jesus have the word of, that we leave with today from John 11, 25 and 26. I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. Jesus then said, do you Believe this. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We bow our heads in a time of prayer. Almighty God the Father, through your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, you have overcome death and opened the gate of everlasting life to us. Grant that we who celebrate with joy the truth of our Lord's resurrection may be raised from the death caused by sin by your life-giving Spirit, through our risen Lord Jesus Christ. Almighty God, grant to your Church, your Holy Spirit, and the wisdom that comes down from above, that your word may never be bound, but have free course in our life, and be preached to the joy and edifying of Christ's holy people, so that in steadfast faith, we may serve you, and in the confession of your name, abide unto the end through our risen Lord Jesus Christ. O Father of mercies and God of all comfort, our only help in time of need, look with mercy upon all of your servants who are ill, who are suffering, who are hospitalized at this time that we lift up from our heart. Assure them all of your mercy. Deliver them from doubt and temptations of the evil one. Give them patience. Comfort them in their illness. And we pray, restore them to health or grant them the grace to accept this tribulation with courage and hope in our risen Lord Jesus Christ. Merciful Father, we implore you, let now the hearts of your people not despair nor our faith fail within us, but sustain us and comfort us in these days. Direct all the efforts of those who attend to the sick. Console those who mourn. Protect all in the medical profession who render assistance, aid, comfort, and healing to the many in need. Also support us in defending our liberties and give those to whom we have entrusted the authority of government the spirit of wisdom, that there may be justice and peace in our land. Bless the members of our nation's military in their selfless acts of service. Shelter them with your protection and grant them daily strength to perform their assigned duties with honor, courage, and strength in the name of our risen Lord Jesus Christ. Resurrected Jesus, in your holy name, we lift all our prayers to our Father in heaven, and we ask that especially in these troubled times around the world, that your Holy Spirit would turn more and more sinners to call upon your name, to humble themselves, to pray and seek the Father's face, and to turn from their evil ways, so that their prayers are lifted in your name and will be heard by our Father in heaven so that their sins are forgiven and increased healing may come to our land and to the world through you, our living Lord Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. 
Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and in the name of the risen Lord Jesus Christ bring you to peace. Amen. Please join in the lyrics provided for you as we sing these three verses from the hymn Christ Has Risen. Alleluia. to destroy our sin forgiving Alleluia Jesus is living Alleluia Go spread the news He's not in the grave He has arisen this world to save Jesus redeeming labors are done even the sin is gone. Let us sing praise to him with endless joy. Death's fearful state he has come to destroy. Our sin forgiving. Alleluia. Jesus is living. Alleluia. Christ has arisen. He sets us free. Thank you for joining us in worship today. A reminder that from 12 o'clock to 2 p.m. today, May the 12th, I'm sorry, May the 13th, we are offering drive-up communion at the school entrance of Holy Cross. And also pray for the meeting of many of our leaders next week as we gather together to plan how and when we will reopen our doors again, but be assured the doors of Holy Cross Lutheran Church will be open soon. But watch for a letter late next week, an email, a congregational email, a Facebook video, an announcement that will detail how we will open and be safe and responsible in the worship of God, even still in this time of a global pandemic. God bless and keep you all as we celebrate a living, risen Lord Jesus Christ is risen, he is risen indeed. Alleluia. Amen.